Hello. Okay, so we're just going to give it a couple more minutes, guys, just to see if there's a. I've just had a text from a couple of people that are just trying to get in. Um, so, yeah, we will join you all shortly. There is a chat function in the right hand side that you'll be able to use today to ask questions, uh, but I will go through that once everyone's in. Okay, a few people have joined us now, so I'll begin um, and hopefully a few others will filter in as we go. So thank you for joining us again today. We appreciate you taking the time to be here with us. If this is your second webinar with us this week, then welcome back. If you did miss our session on Wednesday with Guy Griffiths, then do not panic. We did record this session and we'll be getting it out shortly next week for you. So keep an eye out on all of our social channels uh, because we will post that date for scheduling on there for you. I also want to welcome Mike to our session today, who is our UK Implementation Manager, um, and thank him for taking the time to spend with us as well today. So just a little bit of housekeeping from me. This session will be recorded so that we can use this content again. So if there's any other team members or staff members that you think would be able to benefit from it, um, let us know and we can get the session out again for you. Mike has advised that he's going to be demoing the new trainer app for us. Um, and then we're going to keep this a real interactive session where you'll be able to ask questions um, and get some responses back from Mike. And if you do have questions, then there's a chat function, as I mentioned, which you can all log on and use. Um, I will then get the questions and we can get them asked to Mike. Uh, so that's all from me now. So I'm going to pass over to Mike. Um, and uh, good luck, Mike. Perfect. So hi, everyone. I'll just again, quick in introduction for myself uh, in case you guys haven't uh, come across me before. So I'm Mike, I'm the UK Implementation Manager. Um, as Tanya has said, we will be covering the new trainer app today. So um, I'm hoping that everybody uh, in this webinar is already um, eGym customers and has been using the trainer app, uh, whether that's uh, just as a trainer app function so that you can communicate with your members or even if it is with our hardware solution. Um, this app is available to everyone. And if you do at the end of this, if you guys aren't customers already, please make sure that you reach out to us if you think it's something that will be useful to you in the future. Um, as already said, it is the new trainer app. This is available to everyone as of today. So if you guys have any questions at the end on how you can access this uh, or update the current app you're already using and what you need to do to get onto this one, just reach out and I'll also try and answer those questions at the end. Um, as Tanya has also said, if you have any questions, feel free to um, put them into that question and answer bit. Uh, after each section that I demo, I will stop and open up for questions at that point briefly, um, just so that we make sure I'm not going through it too quick in case there is something at that point in time you need me to answer. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to start off just by showing you a quick video um, today just to kind of outlay what we're going to look at first of all and then i will go into sharing um, an actual live demo of the app so just let me share my screen with you first of all so bear with me one second perfect so hopefully you guys should now be seeing a video there is no sound to this video so just uh watch it through for me
Perfect, guys. So that is just a little bit of what we are going to be covering. So we're going to be going through uh, all of that in a little bit more detail. Um, so I just need to swap to the next screen that I actually need to share. So I'm going to stop sharing for a second and open up the next one. So you would have already noticed that there's a lot of new things that you have seen already there just by how it looks um, going through. Uh, as I've already said, this app is already available for you guys to download and start using straight away as of today. Um, it is a still in development app is something I do just want to make you clear, but the features that I'm going to go through today are live and able to use, and it will still work 100% alongside the old trainer app if you are still using that one as it kind of migrates over. So any of the questions you have that might already answer as I go through some of these features. So. Um, one of the biggest things, and I'm going to start literally from the top and go through from login all the way down through the whole process of using this app straight away. So um, I don't know if we have got any sites in here at the minute that may have. But one of the biggest features is now on login. You can actually, once you log in, if you've got multiple locations, it comes up with the tool to be able to choose which location you're in. So if you have got any trainers who work between multiple positions within different sites, they can then, when they log in, choose which site they're at as they're working, changing. So if they're going from one in the morning to one in the afternoon, they just have to go through, select which one they're going to go into, and then that will automatically bring up all information for that site. Very simple and easy to use. And it's just allowing, as long as that trainer has got trainer rights for both sites, they will be able to access both of them. Are there any questions on that at this time? Otherwise, I'll go straight into the layout of the app. No, no questions in. coming through, Mike. Perfect. So you'll notice that the layout of the app is very different to what you are used to if you have been using our original trainer app, which from this point on, I'm going to refer to if I do talk about as trainer app 1.0. Everything is laid out down the bottom. So all your selection tabs are down the bottom of the app, as you can see on the screen in front of you. And these are now broken up into tasks, members, templates, and then your profile. And that profile is literally the member, the trainer profile as they log on so that they can see all of their activities there. As you saw from the video, this app has been a lot more based around task completion so that you can really look at member engagement on a day to day basis within your club. So everything is always going to be based around that task completion and generation which you'll see more of as I go through this app in more detail. That's why the first page it opens up to straight away every single time you log on is now task. And it will actually sort these tasks out from the, not just the date of most importance on how it needs to be completed, but also on those days for each day that there needs to be completed tasks, ones which are more related to engagement with members more than just something which is not quite as important for uh, keeping members happy. So they are always going to be an algorithm to keep them in that order so you can work through. As you work through these tasks, obviously you can just scroll down to see which tasks need to be completed. You'll notice that you can, from here, see what the task is actually. So first one there, if I take it for Tanya, introduce member of staff to the venue and have a show round. So then if I needed to, if it was something that I needed to call up Tanya, I can touch in and it will take me to Tanya's profile where I can then access into her profile itself and get her communication details so that I can contact her to organize this. And if I go back into tasks here, or if it's something that I can't do at this time, there is now a later button. So if it's something I've tried to do, have been unsuccessful, I can actually choose later and I can set it to be done on a specific date or in a set number of days so that it will automatically then remind instead of just leaving it as an overdue task, it will then pop back up on another day. And obviously, if I can complete the task, I can click on done 
and that will automatically send that through. So if I click on done there, it will come up saying great job and move me down the list. That is so that whenever your trainers come in, sign onto the facility and you, they have some set tasks that, or there will be some set tasks that you want them to complete. So that could be like you can see here when we did that one for Tanya, that was to get her introduced to a trainer and show around the gym. Next one here for Craig, that's something also important. They can get in, work through those tasks around their other duties that they have on that day without having to go into a separate section to find it. It's going to make their productivity level a lot faster on their day to day tasks that they have to complete. Are there any questions on that point at this point in time? I don't want to spend too much time here because it's, I think personally it's relatively easy laid out and quite simple to follow. Nothing coming through at the moment. Perfect. Excellent. Uh, as I said with the layout, as you can see down the bottom of the screen, there is the four different subsections as I already covered. If I go into the next one, it's very simple and I won't be spending much time on this as we can go through this quite quickly. This is the whole member list for the facility that I have chosen when I logged on. So I can see every single member here. If there's a member that I'm searching for in particular, so for example, if I start to search for myself, I can start typing in name and it will fine tune down those members to anybody who has a similar name and I can find the one I'm looking for. So I can then go into that members dashboard and see the information I need to do or do the whatever it is I had planned on doing to come in here. I'm going to go through this bit in a lot more detail in a second. So don't worry too much. I'm just showing how we can use that member search feature. So if I come back out, those are the whole list of members. Um, obviously, hopefully your um, member list will have a lot more photos in it than what we've got here. This is our demo gym. That's the reason why there's a lot more. Uh, I will show you how you can add a photo into your members list on this one as well. So you can see how you can update this. Mike, we just got a question come through from Megan. Yep. Who would like to know, are the tasks just for one individual instructor task or all instructors at the gym? They will always be for all instructors. Um, so any instructor that is at the facility will have access to those tasks. If you do want to make it instructor specific, uh, when you are creating the task, you would need to just put in the name of the instructor in the task there. Uh, unfortunately, at this time, um, there is no way of making it an instructor specific task that would only pop up. So only that instructor could see it when they log on. Um, it is something that I know has been in discussion, uh, but I can't give any more details on that at this time. Um, but yes, all trainers can see every single task that shows up on the task list um, just so that all tasks can be completed at any time of day if there is something um, that needs to go, go through that stage of process. Sorry, I can't be of any more help there, but I hope that answers your question. Are there any others or can I? Uh, oh. I do. I have another one which is asking with regards to the tasks, can you see all of the outstanding tasks? Or is it just for the trainer that signed in? I think that it would, would be too much. It will be all, all outstanding tasks that will come up. And the further you scroll down that list. Um, so if I go back into the tasks on my screen here, the further I scroll down this list, the further away those tasks are to be completed. So the ones that need to be completed more urgently are always at the top. But as the further and further and further I scroll down here will be the new or every single task. And that will be seen for all trainers. Perfect. Any others? Otherwise, I will go on to templates itself. No, you're good to go. Excellent. So, um, just we've been touching on those tasks a little bit there. One other thing is actually, and um, for any of you who have been using Trainer App 1.0, uh, you will know that to set a task, you would have had to go into each individual member and write the tasks in there for them as a specific task just for that member. Um, and that was quite time consuming and tedious as a process that we, we felt. Um, whereas actually, you know, for a new member coming in, 
you actually have probably four or five tasks that need to be completed by your trainers um, straight off the bat. So that could be new members joined up. You then want to get them booked in for their induction. You then want to also get them booked onto a class. You want to send them a training program straight away so that they've got something to follow. Um, might need to take the remind to take the health information or update health information. Uh, there could be an endless amount of tasks that need to be done the minute you have signed somebody up if you put them in here. What we have now done is you can create a task chain template so that you can instantly get those tasks to start popping up automatically without you having to go in and set them each individually to a member. So to do this within task chain, so within templates, you will now see there is task chain templates and trainer templates, which I could go into across here if I select there. We'll cover training plans in a second. But on task chains, I can create new ones by either pushing in the very top right hand corner underneath where my battery percentage is, there's a plus symbol. If I touch that, it will then allow me to start writing a new task chain. Or if I scroll to the bottom of the task chains that have already been written, I can push the add a task chain tile and it will open it up. And now, as I've just said, you could have, you need to write, fill in all these um, aspects of this task chain to create it. But if we did it along a new member joining, so a new member joining, and now I can add the tasks that need to be created, but also you'll notice it says add triggers. The triggers are very important. So for a new member, obviously first task could be, like I've already said, book for induction, and I'm just going to type that very quickly. We want that to be done straight away. So you'll notice here as I clicked on add a trigger, I've got direct, check-ins, days, and weeks. Direct means the minute I apply this to a member, it will instantly trigger that task to come up so that the next time it comes up and somebody logs on to the trainer app, it will pop up to show them that that task needs to be done straight away. There's nothing else that needs to be done. Somebody doesn't need to come in and sign on to a machine or check into the gym. It will just instantly be there. So I can apply that for the booking for an induction. It might be actually for the next task, we want to get them booked onto a class, for example. And that could be then we want that to actually happen. We want them to get acclimatized to the gym, come in a couple of times, maybe two or three before we then try and get them booked onto a class. Um, however you guys do in your facility, this is just a demonstration. Um, so don't take this as kind of the way I would do it. This is just a demo. I may want to do that after either three check-ins because that shows they've been to the gym three times. So I could go check-ins and then set that to three. I could do it in a number of days or I could do it in say if I wanted them to at least be at the gym for a week I could select weeks push one week uh, for the purpose of this demo I'm just going to leave it on weeks here and push done one of the things that will go with that we want to get them booked onto class I may want to add another task here which is send the class timetable And that would want to be direct and linked to getting them booked onto a class because then we can get them looking at the other class time, uh, other classes on the class timetable. So I can then select that and make that direct. So straight away, the minute we would click done on the task, if we completed the booked onto a class for somebody, the direct one for the next one to send the class timetable would then instantly pop up in the task list. You can build this up to add in as many tasks within this chain as you want. So however it is you want to be, whether it's for like I've just done here, a new member journey. If you want to make it one which is a bit more trainer specific, so setting a new training plan, um, taking body measurements, uh, any analysis, something like that. You could create a PT task chain to remind trainers that they need to do it for certain individuals. And you can build this up and up on however much you want you want it to be. When you are done writing this task chain, all you need to do is make sure you can save it. You will notice you will not be able to save if one of the sections is left unfilled in. So if I was to delete out uh, everything in three, it would then take away my ability to save. You need to make sure you've at least typed something in and set all the filters. And then you'll see save in the top right-hand corner. And I'll just touch that and that will save 
task chain template. To then apply it to a member, you just need to select the task chain that you want. It will bring it up so you can check that that is the actual chain you want. So you can double check the steps, click assign, and now you just search for the members. So I'm actually going to search. First of all, I'm going to just apply it to me. So start searching. I can select myself there. But you'll notice now I can actually select more than one member at a time. So if I just had a group of new members join, I can now add in however many have just joined up. So I know that I can keep on top of these tasks for all new members. So for example, if I now search for Tanya, because she is in here, I can put that in and select her. And I can add in more and more, more members if I need to. And when I'm done and I've got all the members I'm looking for, I can just assign template and that has automatically assigned that template. And now those direct, that first direct task will automatically be sent out the next time I sign in. So it would be open up and show in. I would have to log out and log back in just for it to show for this time. Um, but it is then there and set for them. Are there any questions on that front? We do have a couple of questions that have come in, Mike. So one of the questions is, will all the information from the Trainer app 1.0 transfer to the new app, but just look different? Yes automatically will be available the minute you sign on all the information will come through apart from there is a couple of new features which won't draw it through um, and i'll show you those no, new features within the member overview in a second perfect and then one more at the moment with these tasks will these connect oh it's just jumped out of the way there will these connect to the non e gym net pulse app too as in, so uh, somebody who is using the NetPulse app or eGym Digital, will the tasks, if they're using that? So I just, uh, if I could get a little bit more explanation on that question, just because um, these are trainer tasks, they won't be member tasks. So these will be all linked to a trainer. They won't show up in a NetPulse app or the eGym Digital app. If that answers the question. Sam, let us know if that answered that or if you want to provide us with a little bit more detail in the Q&A section. We have another question here from Chris who says, is there an MMS integration option which will show you new members so that you could assign chains to them or have chains automatically apply when a membership record is created? I'm actually very glad that Chris has just asked that question. Um, so there is development. I can't give you a timeline at this point in time. There won't be a MMS system. But there will be the point where auto assign of tasks will automatically happen for a new member who is added into this app or is brought in from the use of the eGym digital member app. Um, it's in development, like I say, said at the beginning, this app is in constant development right now. And there are some features which aren't here yet, which will be coming in in the next couple of weeks, next couple of months as we develop and add it in further. Um, so there will be a point where the task will just auto add if you have selected that function for the task when it's available. So, for example, like I've just said, new members uh, or PT clients, etc. If you click this needs to be added as an auto add task chain for a new member, the minute you add them in, it will add it to them automatically. Hope that answers your question, Chris. Perfect. Are there any other questions? Not currently, you can continue. Perfect. So while I'm in this section, I'm going to jump across into training plans. Uh, so obviously, this is where your trainers, as you could before, you could store all your training plans, write all your training plans. And you can see here, we've got a bunch of training plans that we have written for our gym uh, there. Again, very similar process to writing a task chain template. I can push the blue plus in the top right hand corner. Or I can scroll right to the bottom and choose add a training plan template. And then obviously this brings up our exercise library. Uh, again, it's got all the same exercises that were in uh, trainer app 1.0. Uh, I can now also go in here, just changing everything. So the three little dots within the blue circle, I can touch that to then change the name of the training plan template. So if I wanted to go new workout, just to keep it simple for me at this time, and then I can go below where it says session one. There's the three little dots. Again, the right hand side of the screen. I can change session one to be, say, upper body, just for example. And I can change the frequency here to one 
or two times a week, three times a week, however many times a week it is up to seven, if we leave it at two there. And then I can start adding exercises. Um, I know a question I'm going to get, and I'm going to see if it is going to come up in a second. I can scroll through these exercises to find the ones I'm looking for. Or at this point in time, I can also search for an exercise. So if it is say, a barbell exercise I'm looking for, I can start typing in barbell there. And I can start pulling across. I'm just going to pull across a couple of exercises there. Once I've selected all the exercises I want, I can then touch into these exercises to do all the editing that I need to do. So uh, starting from the top and working down, I can either keep it as a repetition exercise or I can change it across to a duration. So timed exercise. Uh, I can adjust the number of sets here. And you'll notice down here now there is an individual set value. So if, there, if I wanted it to be, say, like a, a pyramid set where I'm working either up in number of reps uh, and weight, I can click that to then change it so I can have a different weight for each set and a different number of reps for each set, uh, or I can keep it where all sets are exactly the same. You can still see the description for the starting position and how to do the exercise, and I can still write in a training comment if I need to edit the exercise because it doesn't quite fit how I want it to be for that in for that individual exercise. Like it's very close. Like for example, on this barbell bench press, it might be the fact that actually I want to add uh, a resistance band uh, into it to make it a resistance banded barbell um, bench press, just for example. Once I'm happy with everything that I've edited there, so again, I'm just gonna add that in, just helps if you actually push done, Mike. Add that in, one press, one rep, uh, two kilos, and then that has edited everything there. So that goes up and I just go in and edit all the other exercises in the same way. Once I'm done editing everything, I can just save that template and that saved it through there where I can then find any of the exercise or the templates I'm looking for here. And then again, to assign it to a member, it's very, very simple. I find the exercise I'm looking for, I select it, you will now notice as I've selected it, I can either add in again more exercises straight away. But now at the top right of the screen, and you will see the outline of a circle with a plus and what looks like a person outline behind it. If I touch that, this then brings up the assign plan for this. So I can then type in the name of the workout for what it is. So I can either keep it as new workout or change it. Edit the start date. If I wanted it to start on a different date, so say, for example, I actually wanted to start tomorrow, change it across and the duration, I could set that down actually for three weeks and then click assign. And now again, same as task chain templates, I can start searching for people. So again, if I search for myself, first of all, find myself and add it in there, but I can again now add a workout to multiple members. I think at this point in time with everything that's happening across the kind of country this is very very useful feature because before again in train at 1.0 you had to go into individual members and apply the training plan directly to them which again was very very time consuming if you were trying to send out a mass program whereas now say you have a, a at home workout that you wanted to send to them you can go in and you can send that at home workout to almost everyone just by going through searching for those members who have asked for it and selecting it up. So again, if I go into here and I search for Tanya, I can select it and I again can build that up and start adding it as many members as I can to then assign that template and then that has gone out. I saw a couple of questions were popping up there. So I'm going to take a second. To let yes. And you read those out so I can answer them. Perfect. So a couple in from Ruth who has asked, is there any plan to be able to create groups so that you can assign to a group or an assign to all option? Uh, again, that is something that I know is in development. I can't give a time frame at that point on this point in time. Um, there are a couple of options um, that might make that a little bit simpler at this point in time. Uh, Ruth, I would probably suggest that you need to just um, in contact with us and we can put you in contact with the right person to discuss the options to make that a little bit easier right now as it's not available within this version of the trainer app or the old version but there is a process that could be done um so if you send an email in um to either myself or tanya um 
and we can put you in contact with the right person to discuss that because it would be the eGym digital app, which would work very well for that at this point in time. Perfect. And she's also asked, in the trainer app 1.0, we can currently yeah. select exercises by equipment or body part. Is that coming as part of 2.0? Yes, it is. That was the question that I said I was waiting for. Somebody was going to ask it because uh, it's the question that everybody has had. Uh, like I said, guys, this app is in development. Um, it's a brand new app. So that's the reason why it hasn't just updated your current app. So you guys still have access to 1.0. This has been built as a brand new app. All those functions um, for writing the programs are coming back. It's just been trying to get it to work correctly around also the the task chain template and everything together. Um, I that one I have a little bit more of a rough time frame on. It is going to happen. I've been told, and but don't take this as absolute solid date. It should be within the within the next three months. Um, for the time being, though, um, you can still write programs if you prefer to write them using that selection method in 1.0 and they do automatically transfer across to 2.0 so that if you did want to write a program to then send out to a load of people you can write it as a template in 1.0 go into 2.0 and so choose to find that program and choose the members you want to add it to as a group and send it out i hope that answers your question Perfect. So one in from Steve who has asked, is it easy to alter the sequence of exercises in a workout should you wish to? Uh, yes, again, you can. Um, and this is where. If well, as you're writing it, there is the again, you can adjust the same as it was in the old one. You can select an exercise and move it up and down. Um, so I can slide them up and down, as you can see on the screen here, just by holding my finger on it and I can change the sequence of the exercises. So if I have draw the exercise across uh, from the exercise library in a random order, but there's actually an order I want them to be in. Once they're in that order, you just select the exercise by touching down on it. As you can see, it's now highlighted and I can move it up and down there. Awesome. And once you've assigned the template to members, can you still go in and adjust an individual's one in case there's an exercise that you don't want them to do? Yes, you can. You can still go into an individual's dashboard find the training template and edit it, same as it was before. I hope that answers that. Are there any more questions? Uh, there is. We've got one in from Megan who's asked if there's a few, ex there are a few exercises on there such as BCAAs and creatine. What is the purpose of these and why do they have time and distance? Right. Um, that is uh, for I'm not going to lie, Megan, that is for our uh, European market across. Um, I have asked if we can try and get some of those removed because it is confusing for the UK market. Um, other than that, I don't have a more in-depth answer for you at this point in time. Um, that is more kind of our European partners across um, over in the German region and France and Italy and all that. Um, it's just the fact that it's easier at this point in time that the whole of EGIM uses the same exercise database and they're in there. No idea why they have a time and distance on some of them when it like I, I get where you're coming from. It's a supplement for some of them, not an exercise. Next question, if there are any. Uh, and we just got one more for the time being, which is asking, do the templates go into all of the trainer templates or just into the trainer that's logged in? with the option to send to be able to all the trainers like in 1.0. At the minute, if you write a training template within Trainer App 2.0, it sends to all trainers. Uh, again, to separate my templates and uh, publish to gym templates is something that they're working on. Um, and I can't give a time frame on when it will be back, but it is something that is being worked on. Cool, that is it for questions for now, so you can carry on. Perfect. Um, the last thing I'm going to go through is uh, I'm going to show what shows up in a trainer profile, and then I'm actually going to go through the dashboard. I've left this to the dashboard to last instead of clicking on uh, another member and going through it like when I had Tanya's up earlier, just because if I show my information, I'm not crossing any GDPR um, thresholds, even though it's a training seminar technically. Um, so 
you will see what a member's dashboard also looks like, but it will just be my information. So down the bottom, the last one to select is your profile. Uh, this will come up with all the recently solved tasks so that you can see everything that you've worked through. Uh, you've also noticed up here, you've got the logout section. So that's where you can log out of the uh, trainer app uh, and also settings in the top right hand corner. This is where you can now access um, any of your trainer settings and also where it used to be along the top of trainer app 1.0, you had the uh, frequently asked questions or feedback section. This is where the support and feedback is. Um, I'm not going to go into that in too much more detail. It's pretty self-explanatory. That's just a settings section, but you can still click on that to send feedback um, and go online to go through the frequent asked questions. Uh, but if I also select dashboard, that will then bring through essentially my member dashboard. And you'll notice there is now a lot more information and also a different layout to go through. And I'm literally just going to work from top to bottom. Um, I'm going to go through everything apart from the analysis, first of all, uh, and then open up to questions. So uh, at least try and allow me to go all the way through up to training plan. Uh, I'll then open up for questions before I then go on to the analysis section, um, which you can see in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, that tile. Um, just to go through the layout, some of it's going to be self-explanatory. Some of it is you might have a little bit more question on. Um, so starting from the top, you'll now notice, obviously, next to the picture and where you've got the name, you can now see actually what uh, the user is in for. So what their goal mainly is. So whether it's athleticism, weight loss, uh, and that information is actually drawn in from the health questionnaire that you can get them to fill in on here, which I'll go through in a second. Underneath the picture, you'll notice profile, which I've already kind of covered when I briefly showed Tanya's. And this is where you can see all the contact information. You can edit that contact information, but also any of you do who do have our hardware solution store our machines. This is now where the auto start feature is. So I can touch that auto start feature, go through the body height and touch it to change it. So setting that up and I can also add in body weight there. And create setup that's then done the auto start same as it was before i go back to the dashboard we have now added in a note section where you can actually see somebody has typed in hello um for me before so you can use this note section um for example if there's a specific piece of um analysis or information or anything you want to put in here you can type that in so it could be for example um recently they've had an injury you don't want to change their whole health questionnaire but you just want to put in that say for example an ankle injury um, and you can just type that in and save that and then i close that'll update and you can see there's ankle injury so it just comes up with some basic notes uh that's there you can either use it or don't use it if you find it relevant completely up to you we still have the activities function where you can see how many activities have been done in the last four weeks and also how many visits to the gym Obviously, this gym doesn't exist as it's a demo gym. That's the reason why there's 31 and zero, because I've been logging activities, but I can't actually visit the gym. If I touch that tile, it actually brings it up into more information so I can go through and I can look at what has been same as it was before, just to go through as a trainer to see what that individual has been doing. I'm going to work across the health information now. So you'll see that has a basic overview of how many issues there is. Um, and more information about those issues if they have been filled in. Again, if I touch that tile, it brings up the health information as it was before. It just looks slightly different to what it looked like in Trainer App 1.0. I can still click the drop down and select to go back and look at previous ones that have been filled in. And I can also add a new one at any time by you can see the blue plus is in the top right hand corner of the screen. I touch that plus again it just opens it up and now it's as simple again as using your finger just to go through answer the questions and this is like i say where you can choose if i change this whereas when i went into my profile before it said athleticism if i now actually put this as muscle gain and i can add some notes in there if i want to uh, current fitness level uh, we go for at the minute because uh working from home will go somewhat trained can add in activities and sports again you can add in as much or as little information here as you need to you can again just the body height 
and weight, working position, job title, hobbies. You can go through all of this again, like I say, as much or as little information as you want. Orthopedic condition, same as it was in 1.0. You can select that, put in how severe it is, a description, and type in if there's any medication, and that will come up. So actually, if I say just put that as a one, type in just a slight number back pain. No medication. I'll leave that like that. Again, I can work it through for joints and other and all internal conditions, respiratory, metabolism. And also now we've added in down the bottom whether they suffer from allergies, how severe they are, et cetera, et cetera. Once you're done, again, push that. Comes up with the member signature where they just use their finger to sign on it and push confirm. That has now, and if I come back out here and let my trainer profile update, you'll now notice it comes up with my okay, one slight glitch there which happened. It hasn't changed my athleticism. That should change across to um, muscle building because I updated in the health information, but you can see that my health information is updated to show one issue and lumbar spine. Um, it probably hasn't changed my athleticism across to muscle building because I've been playing around with it over the last couple of days and I've changed it quite a few times. So that's more on my side, not on when you guys download the app. Again, just below to the left hand side of activities, you've got the tasks. This is where you can again touch that to go in and see what tasks are actually overdue and which tasks are upcoming from for this individual. And I can also click across to see completed. So if I was in here, I could actually start ticking these off and actually saying that I've done these tasks which are overdue now uh, for an individual if that's what I'm trying to do if I go into each one. And then again, training plan, as people have already asked, this is where I can go in to see what current training plan is up for this individual. I can go into that training plan and I can edit it there to say, for example, take out an exercise and then save that to update that training plan for that individual. And it's literally just taken out exercise that was maybe not liked by that member etc cetera, etc cetera. and i could go down and see which one's coming up and if i scroll all the way down to the bottom i can then see finished training plans of the ones that this member has gone through that was a lot of information before i go on to analysis so i'm going to stop and quickly open up for questions there if anybody has got any if there have any that have popped up this time um, yep, so we've got a question here that is asking, can I use this on any iPad? Does it have to be a mini, regular, pro, et cetera? Same rules as Trainer App 1.0. It can be used on any iPad that is at least been updated to iOS 11. I believe it is. I, I um, Yes, it is 11, iOS 11. The only thing is it still cannot be used on Android tablets. It is iOS or Apple only. And that answers the next question around, is it on Android? So thank you. Perfect. So the final thing, is there a question that's just come into the chat from Jamila? I think that's popped up there. It has. It says, can we link this health information with software like EZ Runner yet? uh that is something i'll have to look in uh for you jamila i don't think so at this time um but i will look into that a little bit more and i will email you separately jamila um because you do have your email uh, if you are the jamila i'm thinking of <laughs> any other questions at this time no not at the moment uh, just before I go on, Tanya, if you could just make a note of that question from Jamila uh, and send it across to me just so I can look into it a little bit more straight after this and I'll try and get an answer out to her straight away. Perfect, will do. Excellent. So finally, uh, the analysis section uh, is what I'm going to go through. So any of you who have been using Trainer App 1.0, you will note that you can see the uh, muscle imbalances uh, and any of the other analysis that you may have put in that member but you could never actually see what the member's bio age was unless you asked them to look at it in their member app we have now brought that feature into the trainer app so that you can see it and 
start looking into the actually what factors um, make up that bio age for if you have got all the different factors within your facility. So if I touch that there, uh, you'll notice already there are a couple of things that are coming soon. So you can see uh, the history section, which is coming soon. So you actually get the breakdown of the history um, as it goes goes on. So whether or not, uh, so for example, here, mine's starting at 29. And then if it went down to 28, 27, et cetera, et cetera, you'll be able to see history and be able to touch into that to see a lot more information. There is a little description of what the bio age is underneath so that you can actually help show what it is to the members because a lot of people have actually asked me in the past, so what is bio age? And there you go, there is a description of what it is there. Uh, obviously, you've got the real age compared to bio age and then the components that make it up. This is now where you, the split up of all the different information comes from. So if I first of all click on strength, I can see all the different strength measurements here. Um, and I'm going to apologize, mine's not the most up to date. Um, it hasn't done a lot of different exercises. So you can see if I had more exercise in here, I'd actually be able to see the muscle imbalances. So you can see where it says muscle balance. If I'd done more than so. If I had done, say, triceps and biceps, it would show me the muscle imbalance. If I'd done chest press and uh, mid row it would come up. The only reason why this isn't coming up with my old results from any of the uh, hardware equipment is I haven't had a chance to get on every single piece of equipment in the last two months. This would be the same for you guys the minute you download Trainer 2.0. Um, with the old facilities obviously being closed at this time, you won't be able to get up to updates of this information until people can get back in your facilities. Um, so it's a feature that is useful to see and you'll be able to actually start using it into its full capacity once we can reopen but at the minute all this information will be empty until people can get back into your facilities I just want to make you aware of that uh, so again for upper body I could see muscle imbalances and what components have gone into making that upper body strength again I could go into core and it will give that core age um, I've just had a little bit of a glitch there as I've gone through. Uh, lower body age, if I need to add something in there as well, I could go in and again, it would show muscle imbalances, same as it used to before, and the process that makes that up. So that is the strength one. That is the same as what people would see in their member app. Uh, there are some other factors that come into this now as well, though. So if any of your facilities have got uh, one of the connected uh, body analyzers, can also, so like uh, in body, uh, body tracks, etc. You can go into metabolism, and you can actually see that it will draw through body fat percentage, body mass index, hip to waist ratio to make up that metabolic age. And again, I can go into these for a little bit more history about it, uh, but that automatically draws in from those connected body analysis, body analyzers. If I could speak correctly, I do apologise. Uh, and also, if any of you have got connected cardio, so one of our connected cardio partners, like uh, matrix pre-core and have got eGym smart start that is where the cardio age then comes from so it brings through the average you can also get people to add in on the um, member app especially the eGym digital member app they can go in and they can add in their blood pressure if they've recently done it their resting heart rate if they've got that connected will draw through and also vo2 max can be added in there and again you can go in and eventually when the history is available you'll be able to get that and all three of those factors Come together to then make the actual bio age compared to before on just the e-gym member app it used to be just the strength bio age so it gives a lot more of an in-depth overview uh, and has a lot more analysis in there that is actually everything so i'll open back up to questions now um and then we can answer them and then go from there brilliant so we've got a question that is asking are there still plans to link with life fitness cv machines um, that is still in discussion. Um, I will again have to look into a little bit more at where we are with that. We do have the basic integration uh, at this point in time where you can send um, training plans from the trainer app to those uh, fitness bikes, but you can't get the full EGIM Smart Start at this point in time. Um, we've also been asked by Sam will it directly link to the Body Tracks app or will it be a manual input? Uh, I believe at this point in time, it's a manual input. Um, I will double check that for you though, Sam, and get back to you. Um, Ruth has asked, will we be able to manually 
put in the metabolism and cardio information if we don't have the connected equipment? Uh, currently on the trainer app, no, but they are working on that. If they do have, um, if you guys have got our eGym digital member app, which is um, a bit more up-to-date version, um, which you may have been contacted about in the last couple of weeks, um, they can add it in as members if with a trainer there, they can add it in on the map on that app themselves and it then draws through. Perfect. That's all the questions we have then. Perfect. Well, I just want to say thank you very much, everyone. Um, there's a lot of information there. I try not to go over it too quickly, so I do apologize if I have. I'd like to make it as as informative as possible. You guys can go on to the um, app store now. And if you literally search eGym Trainer and then you're just looking for the app, as you can see at the bottom of my screen there, which says Trainer eGym, and you're just looking for that app, you can download it and your trainer logins, which you use for 1.0, will automatically allow you to log in. Perfect. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, have a great weekend and uh, we hope to see you all on the next one soon. Yeah, perfect. So I'd like to uh, just personally thank Mike for joining us today and helping us with that. Um, now, as we mentioned at the start of the call, we are looking at doing some other webinar content for you guys. So it'd be really nice to get some feedback from you on what information is going to help you at this time and how you can see that we can support you through this network. We do have a Facebook group for trainers, which Mike looks after. Um, so you feel free to ask him any questions in there or, of course, provide him any feedback that you can so that we can really put this content to support you guys at this time. Our next webinar will be launched as a schedule for our social media campaign and we'll also go out on email to keep your eye out for all of that as well. Um, and other than that, that's it from us today. So thank you all for joining and uh, we shall see you soon.